Previously, we've looked at what kinds of reactions strong bases and weak bases undergo in aqueous solutions. And we've also looked at how strong acids and weak acids uh, contribute to the pH of a solution. So now in this case, what we're going to look at is how do strong bases and weak bases contribute to the pH in a solution, as well as thinking about how do they compare to each other? Uh, which one is going to have a higher pH? Which one is going to have a lower pH? We're going to be able to relate these four variables that are all related to each other. Once we know one of them, that tells us a story about those other three. Now, again, as we're thinking about calculating pH for a specific solution, we're going to think about, we want to answer the question, what is the equilibrium concentration of our hydronium or the equilibrium concentration of our hydroxide ion? And again, we think, okay, what does this contribute? Is this being contributed to by an acid or by a base? And that's going to tell us a story about the type of compound that's dissolved in water. And again, our acids are things that are going to produce hydronium. and our base type of uh, compounds, whether ionic or molecular, are going to produce hydroxide in water. So now let's go ahead and look at the different types that we would see, and let's work through some calculations for each of these. So let's identify when we're looking at a strong base versus a weak base. So again, reminding us a strong base, like a strong acid, undergoes a 100% reaction. Now in this case, we think about it being a dissociation reaction, and that's because our strong bases are ionic compounds, which are soluble metal hydroxides. So it's going to be some metal with some number of hydroxides and something that is soluble in water. So it's going to dissolve. Once it dissolves, then it will undergo a 100% dissociation. An example of this would be potassium hydroxide. So now what we want to do is we want to identify what is the pH, the hydroxide, and the hydronium concentration for a 0.5 molarity potassium hydroxide solution. And again, we're always needing to ask ourselves what kind of solution this is. In this case, we already know it's a strong base because we're already talking about it under this category. But how do we identify that this is a strong base? We notice that it's a metal plus our hydroxide ion with it. So this would be an ionic compound that is going to dissociate. Now, so what does that look like in water? We're going to have KOH. I'm just going to put water up here just to say we know we've added it to water and it's going to dissociate and give us hydroxide and the K plus ion. Now again, what does this mean with regards to pH? We're always thinking about what is the hydronium or hydroxide concentration. And we notice with our bases here, importantly, we are producing the hydroxide ion. And again, we draw this, this one-way arrow because we have this 100% full reaction where it 100% dissociates, it doesn't partially dissociate. And now what is the consequence of that? The consequence of that as we think about it with regards to these three variables is that the concentration of KOH that I make in my solution is going to be equal to the concentration of hydroxide. And that is because we have a one-to-one -one ratio when it dissolves and dissociates. Now this may not be the same if we have a different base that has two hydroxides for every uh, formula unit, but in this case, we have one hydroxide for every one potassium. And so this is why we get a one to one mole ratio. So now because of that, we now know the concentration of our hydroxide ions is 0.5 molarity, the same concentration as our hydro, or excuse me, the same concentration as our potassium hydroxide here. So now as we're looking at this, we now know, if I know one of these, I have the ability to calculate pH, our hydronium concentration, and also pOH. We know all four of those are related to each other. Well, let's go ahead and calculate our hydronium, and then we're going to use that to get to our pH. So we know the product, one relationship that we know is the product of our hydronium and hydroxide ions is equal to Kw, and this is true for every single aqueous solution. So we notice we increase, we have a high concentration of hydroxide. That's probably going to give us a low concentration of hydronium. So let's go ahead and rearrange this a little bit. And we would find that our hydronium concentration is equal to Kw divided by our hydroxide concentration, right? We just went ahead and moved this over here by dividing it over. Kw is a constant. It's the autoionization constant for water. We, we know that our concentration is 0.5 molarity for our hydroxide, 
and we would get a concentration of 2 times 10 to the negative 14th molarity for our hydronium ion. Again, very low because we have a high concentration of, of our hydroxide, which leads to a very low concentration of our hydronium ion. So now once we know our hydronium ion concentration, we now can use that to calculate what our hydroxide, or excuse me, our pH is. Our pH is the negative log of our hydronium ion concentration. So 2.0 times 10 to the negative 14th, and we would find that our pH is 13.70. Again, a very high number relative to neutral, neutral is seven. This is very basic, right? The closer to 14 we get, the more and more basic the solution gets. And so we would see this has a very high pH and that is because we have this strong base that contributes to a lot of hydroxide ions. So now again, we, we went through the idea that we wanna calculate our hydroxide ion to identify something about our pH and we are able to find this pH for this fairly basic solution. We have this strong acid, our strong base undergoing a 100% dissociation in water. Now let's compare that to a weak base. So a weak base is something that undergoes a partial reaction or a partial ionization in water. And again, anytime we think about partial, we think about an equilibrium reaction. So let's look at this example of methylamine, CH3 and H2 and identify what kind of reaction it undergoes in water. So we have CH3, NH2, it's gonna react with water. And if we look at this, what we notice is that there's two possible things that this methylamine, the CH3, NH2 could do. We notice that it has hydrogen. So maybe we think, is it gonna donate a hydrogen to water? But it also has the ability for water to donate a hydrogen, right? Because water has a hydrogen as well. And if we look at this, we think, how do I know which is which? And the way that I do that is I'm going to see, am I going to find a Ka or a Kb for CH3 NH2? Am I going to find that it acts like an acid? It has a Ka value corresponding to an acid ionization reaction? Or is it reacting like a base where we find a Kb value corresponding to its base ionization reaction? And we go to both of those tables and we find that our Kb is actually 4.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. And so what that tells me is this is a base ionization reaction, meaning this substance is going to react as a base, and that must mean that water is gonna react as an acid. So if water reacts as an acid, it's going to donate a proton, and our CH3 NH2 is going to accept that proton. So what we're left over with, CH3 and H3 plus, we've added a proton to it, and then we get our hydroxide ion because now we've stolen this proton from water. Now we see here we've made the hydroxide ion, so that tells us if we're gonna identify all three of these, we're gonna first identify our equilibrium concentration of our hydroxide, and now we have our equilibrium constant. Remember, this is the Kc for our base ionization reaction of this specific substance, CH3 and H2. And so now I know my equilibrium constant, I also know my initial concentration, so let's go ahead and set up a quick rice table here to, to direct us in our thoughts as we're doing this calculation. We have initial concentration of 0.5 molarity. We did not directly add these in here, uh, and so we start with zero of each of those, so our product concentrations are gonna increase, and our reacting concentration is gonna decrease in order for those to increase, and so we get 0.5 minus X as our equilibrium concentration for CH3 and H2, and then X and X for our equilibrium concentrations for our products. Now again, once we know these three, we're gonna take those and we're gonna plug them into our KB expression. So let's go ahead and do that right down here. We know our KB, let's go ahead and write this out explicitly, is CH3 and H3 plus OH minus, and then CH3 and H2. Now, if we wanna shorthand this, and maybe save us some time, even as we're writing these reactions up here, uh, we could say our, our CH3 and H2, we could say that is what we would call our base. And so that would make CH3 and H3 plus the same thing as 
BH plus. So if we wanted to, we could rewrite this as KB, and this is not something we have to do. This will just save us time when we're looking at any base reaction. We could actually simplify that every single KB will have this generic equilibrium constant expression, BH plus hydroxide divided by our base concentration. And again, this is just kind of a generalization where we are able to generalize the reaction that we would have. Um, but again, now that we know specifically that we're dealing with our methylamine, CH3, NH2, we can go ahead and plug in what we have for each of these here for our equilibrium concentrations. So we have our equilibrium constant, 4.4 times 10 to the negative fourth, and that's going to be equal to x, x divided by 0.5 minus x. And now we go down here and we think, can we save us ourselves some time? Can we approximate that that is negligible? meaning that this is effectively still going to be about 0.5 um, because it makes it so we don't have to do an, some extra math and do a quadratic equation. And so let's let's go ahead and see, can we do that? Again, we would think between these two, is this a thousand times smaller or 10 to the third times smaller? Again, we're thinking of our KB being smaller than our original concentration. And we see, oh, yes, it is. It's just, just slightly uh, smaller than that. And so then we have the ability to compare these. And we'd say, well, let's say it's going to be relatively small. And so let's go ahead and do that approximation. 4.4 times 10 to the negative fourth equals x squared divided by 0.5. So now we go ahead and plug this in, calculate for our x. And we find that our x is 0 0.015 molarity. <clears throat> Again, fairly small. We notice that it's not really that close to, it's about maybe 2% uh, of that value. So we notice that actually when it calculated uh, to maybe give us some comfort, if we took that extra time and solved for it using the quadratic, we would get an X value of 0 0.015 or an X value of negative 0 0.0151. And so we see, okay, well, we did this approximation and we effectively got the same answer. So we say, okay, we could do that approximation again when we know that we have that relationship there. Now, more importantly than the math is the application of this. Again, we go back to what is our X? Our X is our concentration of the hydroxide ion, right? Back to our original relationship. And so that means now I know two things, the concentration of our base, that has gained a proton, so our methylamine is 0 0.015 molarity. And we also know that the concentration of our hydroxide is equal to X, which is also 0 0.015 molarity. And we think which of those two is a good direction to go in and follow to be able to calculate pH. And we'd see our, hydronium, our hydroxide concentration is gonna tell us our hydronium concentration, our pH, and as well our pOH, because all of those are related to each other. So now in the previous uh, strong base, we looked at going from hydronium to pH. Well, maybe let's go ahead and follow this other path where we can go from pOH to pH, and then from there to hydronium. So we're gonna follow a different path. Again, these are all interrelated, so we can do either one, but let's go ahead and follow the other one so we can see how that works out here. So again, if I want to calculate, we're going to do this path here. We're going to go to pOH to pH to then our hydronium concentration because we want to get all of these. And so our pOH is the negative log of our equilibrium hydroxide concentration. So that would be the negative log of 0 0.015. And so we would get a pOH value of 1.82. And again, we have... Uh, a low pOH, which would correspond to a basic solution, okay? But now, importantly, we want to get to the pH, because we usually think about one scale, the pH scale, how acidic it is based upon, or how basic it is based upon the pH scale. So to do that, remind ourselves that the sum of pH and pOH is 14. So if I want to calculate our pH, it's going to be 14 minus our pOH. 
14 minus 1.82 or 12.18 is our pH. And again, fairly high pH, but again, not as high as our strong base, uh, which was a pH of 13.7. Right, even though they had the same concentration, this weak acid does not contribute as many hydroxide ions. But now that we have our pH, we also have the opportunity to go from there to our hydronium ion concentration. And again, to do that, we remind ourselves of a relationship that we know that the hydronium concentration equals 10 to the negative pH. And so again, this would be 10 to the negative 12.18 molarity. Now we don't not do not leave it here as a 10 to a negative decimal point value, right? We want to get this to scientific notation. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my calculator and I'm going to get a hydronium concentration of 6.7 times 10 to the negative 13th. And again, a fairly low concentration compared to are much higher concentration hydroxide. Now, as we're doing these, uh, again, reminding ourselves, what are the key factors that we think through? What are the questions we ask ourselves? We ask ourselves, what kind of solution are we, uh, are we making? Is it acidic or basic? How do we know that? We look at our specific um, solutions that we have, the things that are dissolved, and then that's gonna tell us kind of the path that we would follow. So these last two videos that we've had have given us the opportunity to think through our, our pH relative to a strong acid or a weak acid or a strong base and a weak base.